All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, today we're gonna look at the Second Awakening, Second Awakened Howls um, with an eye towards RTA viability. Are these guys RTA viable or are they trash? <laughs> so let's take a look. So here is Lala and Friends, looking pretty adorable. Um, attack, skill one. Attacks the enemy to remove one beneficial effect, grant on the target with a 75% chance, recovers the HP with the lowest HP ratio by 15%. Skill ups are damage, damage, recovery 15%. Um, so that would be what? Instead of 15, it'd be almost like 17% off skill one. That seems pretty good for a skill one heal. Uh, skill two is heal, removes all harmful effects on the target, recovers your HP and the target's HP over 25% each, and then removes all, all harmful effects on the ally. Attack skills randomly activate a proportion of the number of harmful effects. So you, remo you remove all the harmful effects and you do attack a bunch. I'd say probably not. Um, gonna be RTA viable. The base stats are not great. Decent attack though. It's kind of meant to be an attacker. Well, maybe it's so. Here's a heal, skill one heal, and then a single target cleanse. Um, haven't really seen much use for the single target cleanse, but the attack going with it is kind of interesting. I just I don't know that it'll fulfill any sort of a role that isn't better fulfilled by an AOE cleanser. You know, like are you gonna take Lala and friends or Fella Jewel? Pretty pretty clear. So I would say probably not. All right, Lulu and friends, Lulu and friends. So base stat wise, this one's looking much more attractive, better HP, better defense. Those are actually pretty solid um, base stats. So already looking pretty good. Here's the attack. Attacks the enemy and recover. I like how it's called attack, but it's a heal. Attacks the enemy and recovers the HP with the lowest HP by 15. Again, the recovery of 15%, which I believe is 15% of 15%. So 10% would be 1.5. So it's like 1.7, something like that. So almost 17%. Um, skill two is remove all harmful effects from one ally and gives them immunity for one turn. So that's pretty nice. Cleanse plus one turn immunity and a little heal for you and them. So the heal for them is probably pretty good if it has a harmful effect. So single turn, single target cleanse, one turn immunity, and the heal of both of y'all. Definitely an upgrade from where it used to be. All right. AOE cleanse. Recovers the HP of everybody by 25% each, and immunity if they had no harmful effects going in by two. Um, interesting. Interesting. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, if you need the cleanse, you would like the immunity, but you're not going to get it. So it's almost like you can use this proactively when you don't need the heal or cleanse um, to get immunity, which is kind of nice. Also, you know, certain monsters can sort of just cycle out of their own immunity, like Sierra, and so you might be using the cleanse for stuff still defense broken, and Sierra gets a bonus of immunity. So it's not quite AoE immunity, unless you build it fast, which you can't because it's speed 99, but it's situational, kind of healy, heal on all three scale skills, um, a single target cleanse, an AoE cleanse, a single target guaranteed immunity, a situational AoE immunity. Pretty good. I think this one will see some play. It will fill some interesting niche niches in that it's, uh, you know, it's a solid just all-around healer. It suffers from what all healers suffer from, is if you can burst in between its turns, then sad face. So it doesn't do, it's not like reactive like Triana or Abelio, where if something happens, happy times for them. It is a, you know, on your turn healer cleanser. So I could see it filling some roles. I don't know that it replaces Vigor. Um, I don't know that it replaces, like, an Abelio, if you use an Abelio in that role. But I think it does something a little bit different. A little bit of everything. Kind of a jack-of-all-trades, pure healer. So I could see this one seeing some RT viability. It was already used in one of the tournaments before the buff. So that's not that's not too shabby. You know, if you don't have other options to get out of things like... Proc out of, like, Okeanos and stuff, that's a pretty good option, I would say. Because it's an AoE cleanse and uh, a single target cleanse. Like, if they like reset you one turn then you have maybe just the single target which can get you back on your feet all right chi chi and friends again base stats bit of an issue right we can see the hp defense is a little bit better and i mean you know it's 500 hp it's not a ton but it's it's enough to be a bit of an issue all right the attack interesting um attacks the enemy and recovers the hp and attack bar of the ally by 15 percent and the skill ups are recovery and attack bar recovery which is kind of cool um you know, with artifacts, maybe you could make this skill one even more healing, but the attack bar recovery and the HP recovery is, I think, interesting. That's a cool first skill. That's a loaded first skill. All right, Dispel removes all harmful attack effects on you and the ally, so no immunity with this one. It's just a Dispel and a heal. 
And then over here, attacks the enemy target and recovers HP of all allies by 50% of the damage dealt. It absorbs the attack bar by 25% to increase the attack bar of all allies. So I assume the attack bar is increasing by 25% what it's absorbed, but it's like a situational AoE attack bar boost, which I don't think we've seen before. I'm assuming if you don't absorb, you don't boost the allies, but we won't know until someone builds this. Um, as is base speed and kind of the funkiness of it. I don't know that this will see uh, RTA play. I don't really know why it would. There's so much good wind out there um, that I don't know that Chi Chi and friends will see much love. So it is what it is. All right, Shu Shu and friends. Base stats looking great. 11,000 HP, 703 defense. So let's compare it to blue. A little bit less defense, but you pick up 1,000, almost 1,000 HP. So pretty good. Lose some attack, but I don't think you're going to be attacking with Shu Shu and friends. All right, attack. <laughs> Attacks the enemy target and recovers the HP with lowest HP by 15%. So same thing with the same skill up recovery. Dispel removes all harmful effects on you and the ally. Recovers HP. So this is the same thing as kind of the other dispels without the immunity that uh, Lulu has. So Lulu's got Shushu. Lulu's got Shushu beat on skill two. All right, heal heal. Recovers the HP of all allies by 25% and recovers the HP with the lowest. Recovers the ally with the lowest HP by 50% one more time. Creates immunity on all allies, full HP, 25%. So one target is getting a 75% single target heal. That's really quite good. Um, we don't see that too often. And then this would love artifacts because, you know, you get a 20% recovery skill three artifact on this. And suddenly it's getting a, what, 75 and 85% because it's 10, it's 20% of 50. It's 20% of 75. So That'd be what, 14, 15? So instead of 75, you're getting 90 on one? That seems really good, a 90% heal on one. Um, so it's a massive heal. Doesn't deal with the debuffs, doesn't have a cleanse, so it's a little less versatile, but a little more heal. Interesting, I don't know. I think the element neutrality of it is probably working in its favor. It's not competing against uh, a lot. Not a lot of people have um, element neutral healing that they would use. I don't know that you bring this to RTA. Just pure healing, I feel like, is not quite enough. Um, I mean, if you were going to bring an element neutral healer, you'd probably bring Bella over Shushu because it's got defense break, it's got uh, strip, and it's got bar boost, right? So, I don't know. This one looks tempting and good, but I don't know that it'll see play in RTA. I don't know. It's, it's not what I'm rushing out to build because, you know, how often do you need a giant heal like that that isn't uh -oh, isn't done better by something like molly or something like that um not everyone has molly but would you bring like a worse i don't know so i'm i'm skeptical on this one i kind of like lulu better i like the cleanse i feel like when you need a cleanse you need a cleanse and the aoe cleanse is better than an aoe heal without a bar boost or anything like that um so yeah i was kind of excited about the size of this heal but i think if you need a heal that big you're probably in trouble and you need something more than a heal to get you out of that trouble. So, like, Vigor can do things that prevent you to need that big of a heal. That's why you'll use Vigor skill proactively, because speed buff's amazing and uh, anti-crit's amazing. You know, if you can't get crit and you're really fast, you probably don't need a 90% heal uh, as much. And plus, his defense break is, is uh, everything, right? His uh, healing decrease block thing. All right, so that's Shushu. I'd rate Shushu as the second best behind the blue so far. All right, let's look at Cha-Cha. Reminds me of the Umbrella Academy, right? Like Cha-Cha and Hazel. Hazel and Cha-Cha. Um, yeah, you guys know what that is. So, we've got attack. This is the... Oh, this is different. Recovers the HP by 50% and creates a shield proportional to the damage dealt by two turns. So, I'm assuming it creates a shield on itself, is how I'm reading that, which is interesting. A shield off of skill one? I don't think we've seen that before. Huh. Well, no, we've got shield as a passive, but not a shield off skill one. We've got Kamun and stuff like that. But interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, base stats are kind of funky on this one. A little bit HP, not a lot of attack, a little bit of defense. All right, hero. This is the cleanse, just the straight up cleanse, no uh, immunity or anything like that. And then attack, attack. Attacks the enemy to inflict damage. Steals all benef beneficial effects on the enemy and transfers the harmful effects granted on yourself. In addition, you and the target's attack power excluding the boss will be switched while the skills on cooldown if the target's attack power is higher than yours okay so you have debuffs you give your debuffs to them they have buffs you give their buffs to you so interesting 
it's interesting. I don't know that it's great. The switching attack power is quite interesting because it's when it's it's when this is on cooldown, right? While the skills on cooldown, I don't know how they keep track of this. Hopefully they do. It's a four turn. It's a four turn cooldown, and it can't be it can't be less than four turns. So, what do you use this on? You use this on something with high attack to nerf its attack. At the same time, make yourself a bit of a beast um, by doing more. This one, I don't know. It doesn't work on bosses, so it's not for PVE. Could it be? It could be. I think maybe a Guild Wars unit because you can control more what you're dealing with. <laughs> there he is. So let's say you're facing like an Odin comp. You can immediately steal all the Odin's attack. You don't. Maybe you don't care so much about the switch, but just the nerf of the Odin is great because it switches the attack power, right? It switches it. So you want to build this thing with no attack because you want to steal all their attack. So you could build this thing full speed, crit rate, crit damage. Because you don't even care about the low base stat attack. You're stealing their attack. I don't know. It, I don't know. It's hard to comprehend kind of how the game's going to process this. Does it care about do you steal all, with like all their runes and stuff like that? Like do you steal that or do you steal their base attack or what? If you steal like their fully runed up attack... I mean, you could have this thing going from 650 to, like, 2k, like, if you steal off Daphnis, which would be really quite good, because um, you could build a tanky, it has a heal, it has this shield thing. Um, this one's definitely the most interesting one. There, This one's the less least straightforward, the most unique. Um, I like the steel attack, because then, you know, you can, anytime you can dump an entire stat and not build it, you've got something interesting on your hands. And so this one being able to be built with no attack does a nerf, give yourself attack, that's kind of cool. So, okay, so overall, I think Lulu is going to be the, if I can click on Lulu, I think Lulu is going to be the PvP unit, the RTA unit that people will use, just because of the double the double cleanse and the immunity. I mean, that's, that's everything you want in a support, right? The light one is tempting, but I think is worse Lulu. I think it's a little bit of a, a false kind of temptation like you should probably not do it just because it doesn't quite bring enough in my opinion maybe i'm totally wrong but i think i would probably wait the dark one is the second most interesting just because it does something unique so rta rankings blue yes everything else probably not interesting dark and probably a bit of a fool's gold is the light one okay so that is my full breakdown of the howls for rta as far as i as far as i see them you guys may see something different or be like yo you gotta use the light one you're crazy i don't know um, but yeah, if you have any thoughts, comments, or, you know, say I'm doing something wrong, just let me know. And I will, uh, I'll catch y'all in the comments, and thanks for watching. See y'all in the next video.